In this video, we will be discussing newborn calf care. There are a few essential components of newborn calf care that should be addressed during the first 24 hours of life to ensure that the calf gets off to a good start. The first and probably most important component of newborn calf care is colostrum intake. Colostrum is the first milk from the cow that is rich in antibodies, proteins, and growth factors. A calf is born with very little immune defense, so the antibodies found in colostrum are essential to establishing a good immune system. The process by which immunity is transferred from the cow to the calf through the antibodies found in colostrum is called passive transfer of immunity. An important factor that determines how successful this transfer of immunity will be is timing. The ability of the calf's intestine to absorb the antibodies found in colostrum rapidly decreases after birth until it virtually disappears around 24 hours of life. Thus, it's absolutely critical that calves consume an adequate amount of colostrum within the first few hours of birth. Ideally, colostrum should be consumed within 12 hours of birth, but earlier is better. In most situations where calving is unassisted and the cow and calf are both healthy, calves should be able to get up and successfully nurse the cow on their own to consume colostrum within the 12 hour window. In cases when you do not witness calving, it's still important to ensure that the calf has indeed received its colostrum. To do this, you should look for indications of nursing. Obviously, if the calf is actively nursing while you are watching, then colostrum consumption is likely sufficient. If the calf is not actively nursing, you will need to look for other indicators. Take a look at the cow's udder. If the hair around one or more teats is matted and slick, then the calf has likely found its way to nurse. You can also look at calf vigor. If a calf is up and running around, then it has likely found its way to its mother to nurse. Still, when in doubt, watch for active nursing. Sometimes, if there is an issue with either the calf or the cow, the calf may not be able to nurse on its own and consume colostrum within the 12 hour window. If this happens, you should step in and ensure colostrum consumption. It's a good idea to always be prepared during calving season. Try to keep some colostrum on hand, either in the form of a replacer or fresh colostrum that has been stored frozen. As a side note, colostrum replacer is different than regular milk replacer. Regular milk replacer will not contain the antibodies needed for passive transfer of immunity. Fresh colostrum can be obtained from another cow, either in your herd or another herd, and stored frozen for up to a year. It is important to ensure that the cow you obtain colostrum from is healthy and disease free, especially if the colostrum is coming from another farm. Diseases such as yonis, leukosis, and mycoplasma can be transmitted through the milk. You can freeze colostrum in a variety of different containers. Shown here is colostrum stored frozen in a plastic juice jug. Another popular option is to fill a gallon Ziploc bag with two to three quarts of fresh colostrum Squeeze out the air, seal it, and lay it flat to freeze so that it thaws quickly when you need it. Regardless of whether you are using fresh colostrum or colostrum replacer, your goal should be to achieve at least two colostrum feedings. The first feeding should occur within six hours of birth, and the second should occur within 12 hours. This is to ensure optimal passive transfer of immunity. If feeding colostrum replacer, refer to the instructions on the bag for mixing and feeding rates. For fresh or frozen colostrum, a good rule of thumb is to feed 5 to 6% of the calf's body weight in colostrum at each feeding. A quart of milk weighs roughly 2 pounds, so a 70-pound calf should receive about 2 quarts of colostrum per feeding. When thawing any frozen colostrum, be sure to thaw it in a warm, not hot, water bath or in short increments in the microwave on the lowest setting to preserve quality. Exposure to extreme heat can damage the antibodies and greatly reduce the effectiveness of the colostrum. You should first attempt to feed colostrum with a bottle. If possible, get the calf to stand up while it's nursing the bottle. If it won't stand or can't stand for the whole feeding, but is still interested in nursing the bottle, it's fine to feed the calf while laying down. Now this calf here is only two hours old and is having some difficulty drinking. In some cases like this, the calf may need a break during the feeding, especially if it's weak or only an hour or two old. 
Giving a calf a couple five to 10 minute breaks during a feeding is fine. However, if you can't get the calf to drink from a bottle at all, you should use a tube or esophageal feeder to ensure colostrum consumption. Check out our esophageal feeder how-to video for more information regarding the use of an esophageal feeder. Besides colostrum consumption, there are a few additional management practices that should also be considered for newborn calf care. The first is care of the navel. Care of the calf's navel is important because until the umbilical stump dries and falls off, it is a direct avenue for bacteria to enter into the calf's bloodstream, which can cause an infection. Disinfection of the navel is very important if you are calving indoors where exposure to bacteria is more likely. Applying a disinfectant reduces the bacterial load and helps the tissue stump dry and fall off quicker. It's generally recommended to use a 7% tincture of iodine as a disinfectant, but there are other iodine-free solutions marketed for navel disinfection that will work too. The navel should be disinfected within 12 to 24 hours of birth. When disinfecting the navel, it's important to get full and complete coverage of the tissue. We recommend using a small container or a cup to apply the disinfectant to the navel tissue to ensure adequate coverage. Now let's take a look at a few additional management practices that can be incorporated into the newborn calf program. Most of the time, cows will lick and clean off their calves immediately after calving. However, in the event that this does not happen, you should step in to dry the calf. Drying the calf reduces thermal stress and stimulates the calf to become more active. When calving during colder weather, calves must be dried off quickly after birth to prevent hypothermia. Shortly after birth, you should plan to apply some type of identification to the calf. This is typically in the form of an ear tag. Having a calf identification system in place is important for record keeping purposes. It's also a good idea to obtain a birth weight. This is especially important if you plan to use or market your calves for breeding. For the most accurate descriptions of birth weight, this weight should be recorded within the first 24 hours of life. You can use a weigh tape, as shown here, or a live animal scale. If you do choose to use a weigh tape, be sure to choose one that is specifically designed for the type of cattle that you have.